Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Morning Huddle for Friday, May 20th of 2022. Today, we are talking marketing and specifically copywriting. And I'd like to introduce our featured guest today. She is Miss Emily De Armas. Emily is a native Miamian who began her career in advertising and media. Formerly with Telemundo, NBC Universal, Emily was on the founding social media team and went on to hold several roles within the company. She has collaborated, I'm letting some folks in. She has collaborated and created content for advertisers like Walmart, Coca-Cola, Ziploc, Ulta, Toyota, and T-Mobile. Her work has won several awards and she was even Emmy nominated for social media coverage in 2016. In 2020, she launched her copywriting business Known as the fairy godmother of copywriting, I love that, Emily teaches business owners how to identify the right language to appeal to their ideal clients. Her goal is to help small businesses increase sales and have happy customers. Please help me welcome Emily to the morning huddle. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Good morning, Ms. Emily. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a bunch of questions, and, and before... Um, you know, and I open it up to everybody to chime in, please. I, just raise your hand and I'll pass you the mic. Uh, I want to lay out all the things I want to talk to you about, Emily, because there's a lot. So okay. first of all, like, I want to talk to you about, you know, your story, your marketing journey yourself and, and your experience. I also want to ask you, you know, what and why does marketing matter to small businesses? Why is that important? Why does copywriting matter within marketing? How can we do copywriting better? and maybe identify some challenges that we might face in trying to be better copywriters. And then of course, you know, anything else that you wanted to add and, or the audience wants to add, um, we're gonna, we're gonna discuss and have some fun. So that being said, uh, tell us about you and, and your journey within marketing. Sure. Um, so like you mentioned, I am a native Miamian. Um, my dad is Cuban, my mom is American. Obviously the Irish and Scottish genes went out because I grew up speaking Spanish. Nobody believes that I do, but you know, this is, this is my, my home and where I grew up. Um, and I um, initially started my career with a small boutique agency here in Miami. It was called Diaz and Cooper Advertising. And at the time, um, social media was not something that was being used for business, um, but we had a client that was uh, part of the Royal Caribbean family was Azamara Club Cruises, Cruises, and they wanted to start using social media because they, you know, they go to these small destinations, and so they launched a Facebook page. So that was kind of my first taste of of marketing, and with social media specifically, which I loved because unlike other forms of marketing, you get that immediate feedback. You know, you know if somebody liked it or not because they're they're telling you. And the people that were fans of that page were not shy in telling you whether they liked what, <laughs> what you were posting or what you were saying. So that was kind of my first foray into that. And then from there, I moved to Telemundo and I was part of that first social media team. And because I had agency experience at that time, basically what they were trying to do was sell um, social media to the national advertisers. So Coca-Cola comes in and they, they buy, you know, a mention on the morning show and they buy all of these things. They have a commercial spot and all this stuff. And the sales team wanted to offer social media as part of that package. So for me, it was really a great time because I was able to kind of sit at the intersection of a lot of different teams. So marketing, sales, the social media team, mm -hmm. obviously, but then also the on-air producers and it was a really exciting time because we were pretty much making it up, even though this is a you know massive corporation. And I think that's a great learning for me now as a small business owner. It's like most of the time, even these major businesses are also just making things up, <laughs> trying to figure things out as they go. Um, yeah. And so it was cool because I was able to really understand how to present the information. So sometimes sales would have me come on the pitches to help explain the benefit of it and why do the advertisers need to invest in this? And then I would go on and create the content for it and figure out, okay, how are we gonna do this? And how are we gonna match you know, the advertiser needs, which are usually like, I want my logo gigantic and I want you to say Coca-Cola 50,000 times. And then what the actual viewer wants, which is usually the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. People don't 
usually want to be bombarded with advertisement. So finding that happy medium. Um, and then I, I opened my, my business um, in copywriting because I, I knew I wanted to work for myself. Every job that I had 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 some level of, you know, communication. I had discovered copywriting and I had been, you know, planning for that. And I, I'm very passionate about it because I think that it's really the key to not only bringing in the right clients for you, but it also helps generate sales. And now in my business, I, you know, I teach business owners how to leverage this and it, it breaks my heart when I, I meet with somebody and they have the most amazing business and they're doing all this amazing work, but none of their marketing is reflecting any of that, you know, and then they're not getting the clients they need. The clients aren't getting the services or the products that they need. So copywriting helps you bridge that, that gap. Right. Right. And uh, how, old, how old is your business now? Uh, two years. Two years. Wow. That, that was a big change, right? It was a big change. I, I launched officially in the beginning of March 2020. So that was mm. fun. Um, wow. <laughs> like the beginning of COVID. Right in the beginning. I basically, I launched, I had sent out all these emails. I had people responding and then we went into lockdown. Um, mm. So, you know, the first six months were, were definitely, were definitely shaky. And then eventually I got my first client, I had some agency relationships. Um, so I was initially writing for clients. And then now I've kind of transitioned because of what I really love is the, the teaching part of it. And I, I think yeah. that um, you can definitely hire a copywriter as a business owner. And sometimes that is the right choice. But I also think that it's really important for you to understand the value of, of what copywriting does, because you're, you're doing it all the time, even if you don't even know, you know, whenever you're selling yeah. to somebody or you're talking about your business, you're technically doing copywriting. Yes. Anything, any words that you're using, that's copywriting, right? Yeah. So why not be mindful about them? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So uh, we have some great um, branding geniuses here. We have Sirena, we have uh, Michelle as well. So it's, it's great to be in the together, right? Um, and we're talking to Ms. Emily de Armas. She is the fairy godmother of copywriting. So uh, we're learning about how important that is. And if anybody has a comment or question, please don't be shy. Raise your hand and I'll pass you the mic. Um, that being said, so before we talk about copywriting, uh, Emily, I wanted to ask you, now that you've seen it from the corporate world, right? You've seen it like from the, world, from the eyes of Coca-Cola, for example, to the eyes of your own small business that had a rough start because it, it happened just with the uh, onslaught of COVID, um, why does marketing matter to a small business? I mean, does it matter? Is, how important is it? How, where do you put it in context in terms of the millions of things that we have to do as, as small business owners? I think it's vital. I think it's really the difference between, you know, a business that's thriving and a business that isn't. And I, I think it's one of those things where you can kind of get by a little bit without it at first, but if you really, you know, you want your business to be successful. And of course we all do, you need to have that, that marketing piece because marketing really the role of it is to bring you quality leads. And then with copywriting, that's how you're doing the selling. So it's like the copywriting is the fuel that drives the sales for your business. And ideally your marketing is acting as a filter. So you're bringing in people that really are your ideal clients and you're weeding out people who maybe aren't the best fit for your business. And so that's what I mean when I talk about the meh to, oh my God, yes, because we all have had that experience of you find you're looking for some type of service or some product and then you land on it and you're like, oh, this is it. This is exactly what I needed. And the reason that you've had that reaction is because of marketing and because of copywriting. So that's really, um, it's important. And you don't necessarily need as a small business to have the marketing budget of a Coca-Cola and because you're not, you're not trying to necessarily conquer the world. You know, you don't, you're not trying to be this ubiquitous brand in a massive market, but within your slice, you want to be known as the expert in your area. You want to be known as the go-to, you want to really serve your clients and a great analogy for that is like if you were out and about with somebody and they got a cut and you had a band-aid you're going to give them the band-aid you know their fingers bleeding you're going to give them the band-aid and that's that's what marketing and copywriting allows you to do it's people have problems that your product or your service solves so you got to give them the band-aid and you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not 
putting your brand out there. And if you're not really talking about the benefits of what you do as a business owner, because you're cheating people of the opportunity mm -hmm. to work with you and all the amazing resources and things that you provide for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Emily and I see Arlene and Fabiana have their hands up, so I'm going to go to them next. But I wanted to, I think the classic example of, some, of a missed opportunity, Emily, is uh, when you go to a small business website and it says, welcome to my company, right? Instead of like projecting something, that's just the meh, right? And then like, oh my God, yes, is if you had a headline that really nailed through to the value that you offer that customer that in five seconds, they're like clicking to schedule a consultation or buy something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I see that a lot. I think it's, you know, it's, it's because that's just not the way the, that we're taught to write. You know, it's like when you, when you're in school and they teach you the five paragraph essay, it's like, here's the intro. And then you're going to have your body copy, you know, three paragraphs and then you have the conclusion. And so you, when you're writing that website and you're not starting kind of with the punchline, which is what you have to do in copywriting, <laughs> you're putting the, um, you're putting the onus on the person coming to the website. So they have to now scroll and figure out, is this what I'm looking for or not, rather than just telling them up front. Um, and so it's just a different way of approaching writing, but it's 100% learnable and even small tweaks can have a big impact in your business. Oh my God. Yeah. And Cause they're, they're going to look at your website for five seconds. And if they don't understand how you can help them, they're on to the next one, right? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm going to go next to Ms. Arlene. Arlene, you have a question or comment? Yes. Yeah, so I'm thinking about, no, I'm not I'm thinking. I'm working on writing out a tool. It's like 500 pages. So one of the things that I want to do, because I may have to merge with a bigger company, I need to make sure I have the copyright to what I'm writing. It's all new to me. I don't know much about copywriting. So, you know, if you can help guide me through the process or give me some strategies to use. Yeah. So when you say copywriting, do you mean like when you partner with this larger company that you're looking for the legal rights? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what it is. Even if I don't partner and I go my own separate to do it, I need legal rights to what I'm right to my tool. Okay. So that, so, so that is copyright with, with an R. So that's the, that's the, the lawyers. And I know it's really confusing. I don't know why we didn't come up with a different term for this <laughs> because it's really confusing. So yeah, that version of copywriting is more like the legal route of making sure you have intellectual property and like that kind okay, of thing. So, so that is what yeah. should I say when I'm looking is that I need help to maintain my intellectual um, property. property. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the interesting thing about that, that, it's interesting though, because for example, if you're writing a book, Emily, mm -hmm. right, what are the copyrights that you have in that book? And one thing I learned is that you cannot really copyright a title of a book. If somebody has titled the book, you know, whatever, Gone with the Wind, I can write a book that's, that's called Gone with the Wind. I don't know about that one because it's such a huge hit, but um, no one can copyright a title of a book, for example. And then anything that we write and we have ownership, my understanding, and we have Marlon Hill, who's an attorney, and Marlon, if, if you're there, if you can chime in, it'd be great. But any word that you write is yours by default. You own it. Right? That's my understanding. But um, Marlon can can chime in, chime in or, yeah, there he is, Marlon. <laughs> sure. How does sure, that work? Hello. Um, hey, Emily. No, so, I mean, you know, the, the stuff that Emily does in terms of writing original content, um, you know, when, she, when Emily is, is hired um, by a company to write original content, um, the company pays her to, to write content for that company. And typically the company would own the, the actual original content. Um, Emily has to, uh, unless she negotiates a different agreement, the company owns the rights to the original content that Emily writes for the company, right? So that content may go on the website. It may go in a um, a corporate deck that you print. It may go on a, a, a promotional flyer or a label. That original content, the photos and the actual written words that Emily, Emily, um, through her own innovation and collaboration with the company is owned by that company, right? So that's copyright, meaning the content, the words, the, the audio 
the pictures, all of that is the copyright and it's owned by the company for several, several years. The trademark is the actual name of your company, um, the slogan um, for your product or your service. That's the difference between the trademark and the copyright. Copywriting is the art of um, you know, actually creating content for a particular project or how the company projects itself or promotes itself. Um, and it's a skill of, in and of itself, similar to being an author of a book. So when you have like Ms. Arleen, like 500 pages of intellectual property that is in the form of words, um, what protections does she need, to, does she have? She has, she has lots of um, opportunities. Um, the reason why you register your copyrights, the, the content that you have, the photos that you have, the video that you have is because you're using this original content to promote your, your, your business. So if you go to copyright, C-O-P-Y-R-I-G-H-T dot gov, you can learn a lot about protecting your original content that you have, it's just the, the, the ideas that you actually memorialize for your website or your social media or um, anything else that you, that you publish and give to the public. So you want to um, register that with the US Copyright office and you go to copyright.gov and it's very simple you submit um, a copy of what you wrote if you have updated versions you have to update um, submit another filing to update a copy um, of that if you write a book if you write a manual if you have a curriculum if you have um, any other documentation that is related to your business products or services it's important that you you seek out exactly how how to protect it. Um, but for Emily, she is always creating content for various types of companies as a copywriter. Um, and some of the content she may be she may retain as her own her own works, or she's doing it on behalf of a company. Mm, okay, excellent, Miss Arlene. Did that help out? Yes, it did. Thanks. Well, awesome. Thank you, Marlon. That's awesome. I'm going to go next to Fabiana. She has a question or a comment. Yes, the question that I have is for Emily. What it will be the um, advice that you could give us, the community partners, to make you know easy to understand, like you said, that the business owner, they shouldn't be thinking that they have to have a, a budget like the Coca-Cola. What it could be the simple, you know, uh, words or magic words that we could use with a small business owner to understand the importance of marketing, copywriting, and everything. If you could give me those tips. Yes. Um, the most important thing is for you as the business owner to put yourself in the shoes of the client and understand, okay, what is their biggest struggle? And then what is the thing that they want the most? So in copywriting, we call those the pain points and the desire. So the pain point, okay, in the struggle is what's keeping them up at night about this problem? You know, how does it affect them in day-to-day -day life? What issues is it causing for them? And then the desire is if you as the business could wave a magic wand and make that go away, what would they want that to look like? So think about it as I'm taking you from this problem to this solution. So um, just an example, let's say somebody who is dealing with uh, chronic fatigue or, you know, some kind of health condition, it's like, I take you from feeling like you don't have enough energy in your day to being able to wake up and go the full day without having to take a nap in the middle of the day because you're so tired. I mean, something along those effects, but you wanna always use the language of the person that you're trying to help. So as much as possible, when you're talking to them, asking them these questions, like getting to the core of how does this problem actually cause you issues in day-to-day -day life? What does that look like for you? Because when you can speak to that, that automatically creates a sense of trust. Okay, this person knows what I'm dealing with. This person knows the, the problem that I have very, very intimately. And I believe that they can help me. Um, one of the issues that I see often is that we're being too general with our, with our language. And there's an opportunity to get really specific. So if you want, talk to me about your business a little bit. And maybe we can think of something just to get it going. That's a good advice. I mean, we work with different business owners, so, but um, most of the time they don't understand, uh, like you said, what is, their, what is the factor that they 
they cannot sleep at night. It's true. So that's really very good for us to understand why we need to ask those questions. Thank you very much, Emily. You're welcome. Absolutely. Excellent, Fabiana. Thank you. I, I know Michelle had her hand up, but I'm not sure. Michelle, did you want to comment? No, she she spoke so eloquently about the importance of copywriting because I I help uh, business owners with building their email drips. And oftentimes, I'm sorry, is that me? And um, it becomes a, a challenging conversation with business owners that don't understand the importance of an email drip. And so often I, you know, use bigger brands as examples, you know, like when you go visit um, Target and you become a rewards member, you're now getting all these emails that keep Target top of mind. And so as a business owner, that's really your responsibility to make sure that you're staying top of mind with all of your clients and take them through that journey of what's going on with your business. You, you have the power of really uh, targeting very specifically like like um, Emily said, your your audience. Right. And I think it goes back to the question of knowing your customer and having empathy, right, Emily? Yes. Um, I think Michelle um, so glad that you brought up email marketing. Because email marketing is actually on camera. Can other people hear that? It's like a kind of a back You guys hear that? No, it's just me. Um, so the email marketing will give you the biggest ROI. So for every dollar that you invest in email marketing, you can expect an average of $42 in revenue. And it is just, uh, I, I love email marketing. And I have a lot of clients who are very skeptical because they're like, I never check my emails. This isn't going to work. And then we work on an email series uh, or a drip like Michelle was talking about. And then all of a sudden they have people on a wait list. They have people already ready to buy from them when they you know launch the next service or whatever they're offering. And so it's so, it's so powerful. Um, email is just in general. Um, but to, to answer your question, Danilo, yeah, it's, it's empathy. It's, it's getting into the psychology and the emotions of somebody who, um, is coming to you. It's like really understanding their current situation and then understanding where they want to go. So, um, the analogy that I use for this is like, if you're walking in the forest and you come across a, a pond, let's say, right. And you're like, it's hot. I kind of want to just, you know, cool off. If that pond is murky, if the water is brown, if you can't see to the bottom, you're not going to go swimming in that, in that pond. But if you come across a pond that is clear, it's crystal clear, you can see to the bottom, you feel a lot safer. And that's what good copywriting does. It allows your client to feel safe because they feel like, okay, I'm in good hands. This person knows what I have been dealing with and what I need. And that, that sense of trust is, is really important when you don't have the marketing budget of a you know, massive brand to just be blasting across everywhere. Um, that connection is your most important currency as a business owner. And I wanna ask you about the type of difference you've seen copywriting make. Uh, maybe you have an example or something, Emily. Um, but before we do that, I wanna just go to Ken and see his hand is raised. Ken? Yeah, um, Danilo, I think that's you buzzing. Yeah, it was. Um, I just wanted to say that, I mean, the, the first part that was brought up was a question of, you know, legal protections and what's right about copyright and stuff. And a lot of people are afraid to go to attorneys because they think they're going to get stuck with a big bill to get that stuff figured out. Um, so they rely upon resources like um, we were heard earlier, where you just go on the web and try and figure it out. But there is another option. There are prepaid legal plans out there where you pay 25 bucks a month and you have access to attorneys to and to do contracts, to do wills, to do all that kind of stuff. So that sometimes is a great option for a business owner or an individual to just have one of those um, you know, programs and that is something they can rely upon. These are best in class attorneys in each city across the country. I have one of those plans and I've used it for a ton of things. Um, I use it to help figure out what uh, different insurance agents could pay in commissions and stuff. So you don't have to try and figure this out on your own and you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for an attorney if that's something you don't wanna do. There are resources out there that are very economical 
for the average business person. Um, and anyways, that's it. If you want, anybody wants more information, I will point you in the direction of that, but that's another option. Thank you, Ken. Is that buzzing better? Yes. Okay, I think my mic was uh, using the laptop instead of the mic. Anyways, um, what do you think about that, Emily? I think that's great. Um, I, I do think that, you know, protecting your business from a legal standpoint is really important. Um, you know, having like, you know, terms and services and privacy policy and all that kind of compliance stuff that you need. And um, I would definitely be interested in that, that resource, because it's just nice to have to not to, you know, go down the Google rabbit hole. <laughs> trying to figure stuff out yeah and there's some pre-existing language right that we can just borrow right and we can use um in um in first turn templates or things of that nature but um i, I see vanessa has, has her hand up but before we get to vanessa emily did you want to share like an, an example of how to make this idea come alive of how copywriting can really uh, make an impact to your marketing yes absolutely um so like i mentioned before i have i have a client who is uh she's email averse, right? She didn't really believe in the power of email. Um, she's a business coach. And what she does is she helps people who have um, within the spiritual wellness community, things like, you know, yoga, Reiki and massage therapy and that she helps them launch their businesses. Um, and she does this because her grandmother was a, a healer. You know, she did Reiki and her grandmother unfortunately had no savings, basically poured everything into the business, was working around the clock, you know, 50 bucks a session and, and, didn't even have money to live. She was just kind of bouncing around couch to couch of, of different relatives because she was such a giver. She didn't want to charge more and she never really did the business thing properly. And so this business coach works um, in that in that area. And she was not really keen on email, but I said, just let's just set it up. Let's just do it. And so we did an email series, it's five to seven emails and every email has a specific purpose. You know, so first we're introducing her, we're introducing what you know, the problem is, so we create that sense of empathy. She really understands what these people need. Um, she's explaining what it's costing them. This is what it's costing you to not, you know, go this route in your life and to not do right by your business and set it up properly. This is what, what could happen. Um, she's also talking about the benefits, et cetera, et cetera. So that kind of goes into the email series. So she had email open rates that were very low before. So after we implemented this, her rates open to 41%. And then when she went to launch her product, she had a list of 50 people that had already said, yes, I want to know when you, you know, when you're launching this, because I already want to sign up for this. And this is a high ticket, um, you know, kind of consulting hybrid that she does where she's selling these around 5k a piece, you know, to help them launch. And so when you have that amount of people that are interested and, and ready to go, I mean, that that's all through the emails and all through the the copywriting. So what I heard from that story is if you do copywriting right, you can generate way more business, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's yeah, that's really the power the, of it. Yeah. And, and that's the, you know, the point of it, it's, it's to help you increase your, your sales. And, you know, there, there are some sleazy kind of tactics that you can use in copywriting. Um, but I think the key is to just know that consumers are really you know, smart these days. And it's, there, there's um, a fear that like people don't want to be sold to and people do when it's a product that they actually want and need, then you, then you definitely want to be sold to. And so it's just finding yeah. the right words to appeal to that. You know, if you're trying to sell me something I'm not interested in, then yes, that's, that's going to give you a bad reaction. <laughs> but if it's something that they want and that they need, then you should sell to them and you should absolutely show them. This is the benefit of why you should buy my services, my products, et cetera. This is how, it, how it's going to benefit you in your life. Yeah, I know uh, Jeffrey Gittimer has a line that I, I like. He says that nobody likes to be sold, but everybody likes to buy. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> buying is mo way more fun <laughs> than being pressured. Right. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to go next to Miss Vanessa. Vanessa, good morning. I think Dale has his hand up next. So Dale, you'll be next. Vanessa? Okie dokie. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Um, Emily, thank you. This is like, uh, I feel like we're sort of having two conversations. <laughs> Copywriting and writing copy. 
Right. <laughs> I, I, I have a few questions about writing um, copy and the and the work that you that you do because I never thought of like going externally to find somebody to write copy for me. And uh, so my my first of three questions, Danilo, I have three questions. Keep track. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> for you, what does the ideal client look like when they come to you? Someone who's like ready, like you don't have to do a ton of upfront work. They're ready to, to start. What does that ideal client look like? How are they prepared? Yeah. So for me, um, I don't do as much, you know, done for you copywriting anymore. My my style is very collaborative. And so I, I know that's kind of difficult for people in the past who are used to just being like, hi, can you just write this for me and deliver it back? And mm -hmm. that's not the work that I do. So for me, my ideal client is somebody who really cares about the marketing in their business, who understands the value of it, who has written things in the past and maybe not had a ton of success. And that's why I call myself the, the fairy godmother of copywriting, because you bring me the pumpkin, which is something that's not working. And then together, we're going to turn it into a carriage. And this carriage does not have a midnight curfew and you get to keep it and it's yours. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's my analogy for us. So for me, an ideal client is someone who has a something for us to look at. So that could be... Um, it doesn't always have to be writing, but that's like, I have a website and it's just not working. Or I, you know, I have a services page and like, no one ever clicks on this, or I, I, I don't get any leads from my Yelp page. Like, what am I doing wrong? That's, that's one. And then the other, the other ideal client for me is somebody who has questions about their positioning in the marketplace. So there, that's another avenue that I go with, with clients where it's more like, we are going to figure out what your brand story is we're going to figure out what makes you unique in comparison to your competitors and we're going to find out how that matches with what your ideal client wants and how do we you know kind of bridge the gap so that's um somebody who has something ready to go who has a pumpkin basically is my is my ideal client awesome thank you what do you feel like are some universal truths that apply to every small business profit or non that are just basic, like these things you must do um, to have success in this area. Okay. So there's three. So the first thing is that your ideal client has to know that you're talking to them. So that means they have to be able to self-identify when they come to your website, whatever the touch point is, it could even be a storefront. They have to know, oh, this is, this is for <laughs> me. And this, this business is talking directly to me. So, you know, if you are a business that targets moms, is that specific enough? Or should we say, you know, moms of toddlers or moms of teens, like really getting specific on who you talk to and making sure that that's front and center. So they know, oh yeah, this is, this is me. The second thing is that they trust that you understand the problem and you therefore have the solution for them. So that's what we were talking about earlier with, you know, this is their, their nightmare scenario. This is what keeps them up at night. And then this is what they want. So that's how you're creating that safety. It's like, I, I, you're, when you're able to describe very specifically what they're dealing with. So we'll go back to the like chronic fatigue example. If, if you're saying things like, well, you know, you're tired all the time. Like they already know that, you know, and everyone else is going to say that. But if you can say, for example, are you, you know, are you um, feeling frustrated because every time you go on vacation, you're holding up the group because you're tired and you can't, you know, you can't spend as much time enjoying and sightseeing as everybody else. That's more specific that hits in the gut more. So you want to try to go for the gut people buy from the gut. And so the more gut focused you can be versus general, the better. So that's the second. Um, and then the last one is they need to know why you are the best option for them. So this gets more into kind of the sales piece, which is like, you have to understand about your client. What have they tried in the past to solve this problem? So before they got to you, they probably were doing other things, even if that's just Googling on the internet, you know, like the, the, the lawyer example that came up, you know, a good thing for that, that organization to know is like, people are doing this, this, and this before they come to me. And these are also the other options that they could go with, right? So you're solving a specific problem, but maybe other people are also solving that problem. So understanding what are the alternatives out there? So like if we were going to market 
you know, like P90X or one of these like at home training things, the, the benefit of that, you want to frame it compared to what else is out there. So it's like, now you don't need to have a gym membership. Now you can work out whenever you want. You're not limited to when the class schedules are at the gyms. You don't need a bunch of equipment, right? So if you know what other things they might be considering, then you can speak to how your mm -hmm. thing is, is different and how your thing tackles some ish, some of the issues. So that's the third one when it comes to, they need to understand why you're the best option. Those were fantastic concrete examples. Emily, thank you so much. I noticed people starting to write. Well, yeah. um, thank you. I think that would be worth being on the call just to just to get that juicy tidbit from you. Uh, so, so I'll get to my last question, even though that led to me having a couple more. Um, so what do you feel? Um, can a company have impact hiring a copywriter, working with a copywriter with a very small budget, if I only had, say, just $200 a month to invest, would that be uh, worth bringing to the table to get something going? How do you feel about that? What are your thoughts? A good copywriter is, is pricey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not, it's not necessarily an astronomical budget, but um, I think that, you know, good, if, if you want quality copywriting, and it's, it, it depends on what you need. Like if you need somebody to write a brochure or to write some marketing materials, if you really understand the value and you understand all those core things that I just talked about in your business, then you can direct the person and maybe a $200 budget is going to be fine because you don't, you don't have to rely on them to try to come up with all this stuff out of thin air. I think that's, that's the major thing that I would just say to anyone who's considering hiring a copywriter is make sure that you know all of those things before you hire somebody because no amount of clever language and you know pretty words are going to fix a messaging problem so if if you don't have that down mm -hmm. um and it's not like you have to come up with it either the the answers are already out there in your ideal clients you just have to go talk to them and you just have to ask them um and so it's, it's actually pretty easy to get answers from people because people like talking about themselves. So if you're like, you know, <laughs> so out and you have a survey and you send it out to them, then awesome. You know, that, that alone um, will get you a lot of details. Um, but there, there are, there are ways you can work with copywriters. I would recommend you look at something like Upwork, um, which is, yep. you know, one of these, one of those websites. Um, but there, the reason why I, I like to teach businesses how to do this is exactly that so that you don't feel like you have to outsource this constantly and you have the confidence to change things because in your business things are shifting all the time and it it's like that I'm going to get it wrong but you know the you teach a man to fish and the or you make him dinner I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah teach a man to fish and uh give a man a fish and he eats for a day teach a man to fish he eats for a lifetime yeah exactly it, that's what I want to do with small business owners, because I think it's, it's a really valuable skill and it's accessible to everybody. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Emily. I, I, I do just, I do just want to tell you, Vanessa, and, and this is for everyone on the call. Um, for anyone who's here, I am offering a free 30 minute consultation. So if you have marketing questions or, you, you know, you just want to talk strategy, like everyone who's on here, I'm going to drop the link in the, in the chat thing. Um, you guys can, you know, just pick my brain for 30 minutes. We can talk. So I just wanted to offer that to everybody. Very kind. Wow. Thank you so Fantastic. much. That was rich. <laughs> Emily, thank you so much for that. That's amazing. And Vanessa, you're hired as an interviewer. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just sit back and drink coffee. <laughs> thank you. Um, this is a great opportunity. Uh, Emily's putting forth a free consultation, guys. Please take advantage of that. And, and I would recommend that you do a little bit of homework, like, select a piece of writing that you've done or an email or something that she can take a look at um, so that you, you could be very, you know, productive. And the other thing I want to, I think Dale had a question. Dale, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, two, two questions. One, uh, uh, I do grief support education in the aftermath of disasters. So my ideal client would be like the church that's down the street uh, from a, a tornado or something. And they, they, they want to help provide grief support, but they don't know how to do it. Okay. So the, so obviously the pain point is pretty obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so um, 
Um, my website basically shows what we do, but we don't have any headlines that reach that speak about their pain point. So that I, I need a, a, a re, to rework that. Uh, but my second question is, I I send out um, using Mailer Light. I send out emails um, to about just a little bit less than three thousand subscribers that have you know given me their email through the website but i'll send out just a little bit less than three thousand and maybe 117 will open it even and most of it goes to junk mail even my wife doesn't see my email because it goes to her junk mail so it sounds pretty it, it feels very futile mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is a problem. Um, so, well, first, I want to talk about the what you mentioned with the pain point. Yeah. So I think, yes, definitely, obviously, people are, are grieving, there's that kind of larger pain point. But if, if you're if your ideal client is really the church or that community touch point, then their pain point may be more and you can tell me if this is wrong, because this is just me spitballing here but it may be more geared towards the fact that they're overwhelmed right and there's so much need and they don't they don't know what to do about it right so it's not just the grief it's like they don't they're they're feeling um like they themselves don't have the resources or and there are the preparedness to handle this that's just a, a thought um, yeah, the, the knee-jerk response is we need to provide food and clothing and and uh, emergency assistance, and they completely ignore the emotional needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's because it's easier to do. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's just let's let's get a campaign. Let's get some food together and deliver it. That's easy, but yeah. emotional support is hard. Yeah, and that's really what's vital. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, going to your email question. Um, I would say focus on your subject lines. So basically, if your subject line is strong, you will have a, a higher likelihood that somebody is going to actually open the email. And so um, there are different ways that you can address that. Um, looking at your at your subject lines, creating a sense of curiosity, um, you know, what you don't know about grief counseling, that might be a good one for you to test out. Um, something that kind of creates a, a desire to learn more. Um, also numbers, people tend to click on emails that have numbers. Emojis, I don't know if that's in line with your branding, but people really respond to emojis and subject lines. Um, that's something that if you do want to set up a, a 30 minute consultation with me, I, we can look at what you've been doing and I can give you some feedback on it. And then the other thing is that uh, because of the way that like Gmail and all these providers are doing things now, a lot of email just ends up in the spam. So what you might want to do is just ask people a question and ask them to reply to the email, because if they're replying to the email, then the, the email gods, right? The algorithm of the email will say, oh, okay, this person actually wants to hear from whoever is sending the email because they took the time to reply. Um, so I would say that's a good strategy just across the board for anybody. When you're sending out emails initially to a group, ask a question to get them to respond because then your email will come out of spam with all the other stuff that's like buy a free pillowcase set and you're like, I don't want this. You know, you want to be in the inbox, the main inbox. Mm. Okay, thank you. So much. Thanks so much, um, Dale. Um, Emily, we're... We have about five more minutes. Um, anything else that you think, and I know that Ms. Um, Ms. Valerie Lavin has an announcement as well, but is there anything else you feel um, we need to know about copywriting? Because we have a lot of marketers. Everybody here on this call is a marketer, right? We're all leaders, we're all marketing. And um, anything else that you think it's you know critical for us to know about copywriting and doing that well? I would say, um, I kind of touched on this earlier, but the answers already exist in your clients you just have to learn how to listen for the answers so the better questions you can ask the better quality of answer you'll get so really you know drilling down into what's your struggle with this what are you sick of hearing about this 
industry or this topic, like those are great, you know, just questions, just asking questions will give you that marketing gold. You don't have to just kind of think of it out of thin air and um, don't be afraid to include your personality. You know, we, we tend to get stuck in like business speak and we feel like we have to have this very professional front and you can be professional and you can have personality and you will connect with your customers a lot more if you have that sense of empathy. And you know what? I want to talk to you a little bit about that, Emily. And I put a, a head, um, I put a resource in the chat box that I use personally for all my email marketing. And it's called uh, Headline Analyzer from CoSchedule. My goodness, I love that tool. I will not send an email unless I put the subject line through that tool. And if you get like an 80 or plus score, you're good to go. I think 70 is the minimum. It turns green, gives you a score on your headline. And a subject line is a headline. So uh, mm -hmm. to ensure open rates, right? Yep. Um, I use that tool and it's been so helpful. So I just wanted to share it. But I wanted to ask you something. I think the biggest barrier to good copywriting is this, this uh, kind of world that we live in of copycatting other marketing mm -hmm. and not being in touch with ourselves, right? With our own voice and feeling funny about being authentic because, you know, there's so much marketees out there, you know, the, the yeah. same old, same old. And then here you come being a little bit vulnerable, be, being authentic, sharing uh, some of those things that, you know, sometimes we feel uncomfortable sharing, but that make your copy come alive for the for the consumer right for the for the customer for the people you love right um how do you tackle that can you speak a little bit more about how we can handle that or deal with it absolutely i think it's like you hit the nail on the head that that really is what makes the difference i think that's why we get stuck in you know in in business speak is because we're we're kind of afraid to go there but the biggest gift you can give to your ideal clients is them feeling seen and heard and understood and so that's really where the relatability comes in. And there's actually this thing called the Prattle effect or something like that, which is that we actually like people more who we deem are imperfect or that we can see that they have flaws versus somebody who's always got this like very polished front. We, we like that. So if you can share, you know, your own struggles, maybe you help your clients overcome something that you yourself dealt with talk about those things, you know, um, bring that into your, your email marketing. That's a great place to do it. Or even in your about page on your website, you know, don't be afraid because it, it happens almost 95% of my clients. It's like, they're telling me about their business and I'm thinking, this is so amazing. This is wonderful. And then I look at their website and I'm like, why aren't you saying any of this? <laughs> like this should all be here. You know, the things you yeah. feel like you can't say, maybe consider saying those. And I, I guarantee you, people will respond to you in a more powerful way. Even the things that piss you off about your industry, that's a really great place to start. You know, what are you, what, yeah. what, what are you mad about that made you start this business in the first place? That, that might feel a little easier than maybe getting really more vulnerable, but um, it, it helps you really bring in those customers. Thank you so much for that, Emily. And thank you for your time today. How can we stay in touch with you? Um, you're on Instagram, Facebook. Where can we follow you? How can we connect with you? I know that you have an offer. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So I'm going to I'm gonna drop the link in here again because I had put it up at the top. So this is, it's a free 30-minute consultation. You have a marketing issue. You have an email you want me to look at, a website. You know, um, there's a little intake form on there so that you can fill out that'll help me better understand your business. So I, I really recommend that you guys take advantage of that. Um, and my website is just my name, emilythearmas.com. You can find me on there. You can sign up for my email list. You will get a freebie when you sign up. That's actually all hooks. It's 58 different hooks, which are the same thing as email headlines, which are the same thing as, you know, headlines you can use on your website. Um, and I explain how you can make them your own. So I recommend you check that out too. And I'm on Instagram and I'm on LinkedIn, not really Facebook, but you can, you can find me in those places. Um, if you want to message me on LinkedIn or send me an email on my website, I would be happy to connect with anyone on this call. I think this is awesome. And I plan on attending huddles as a, as a viewer as well, because I think it's great. Oh, thank you so much, Emily. Let's give her a big round of applause, everyone. Thank you, Emily, so much for your time and expertise. And for sharing that with us. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad to. I'm I'm happy that um, you know, if there are any good takeaways here that you you guys run with it and just make your copy shine in your businesses. I love it. That's what the huddle's all about. And you know, all of us coming together and sharing. 
Um, thank you for that, Emily. And I want to pass the mic to Valerie. She has a quick announcement she wants to make. Valerie? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I it, or, um, Danella gave me a, an opportunity to introduce myself when I first came on. There's just a few people. Um, but I am uh, Valerie. I retired from the Army in 2014. Since then, I've started my own company, Luminary, as well as a nonprofit action zone. Um, and then I support a national nonprofit, Bunker Labs. Um, both of those nonprofits support veteran and military spouse entrepreneurs. Uh, the 31st and the 1st of June, we have a couple of events coming up. Um, and I will drop again the information in the chat so everybody has it. Uh, so if you are interested in supporting veteran and military spouse entrepreneurs, um, I would appreciate uh, you attending so that we can help integrate them into the South Florida community. Um, one of the biggest barriers to transition success for um, uh, veterans and their family members is their lack of network. And as entrepreneurs, as many entrepreneurs on this, um, on this uh, Zoom today, know that network is um, very important for the success of your startups. Um, so you don't have to be a veteran and military spouse. You just have to want to support um, that community. Um, there might be potential for um, future collaborative partnerships, uh, business, all those kind of things. So I hope to see you guys there. Um, again, I put the uh, information in the chat and I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Thank you, Valerie. And thank you thank for your you, service. Donna. Thank you for Thank you for all you're continuing to do to serve our community. And we really appreciate it. And that'll be the last word, guys. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a big round of applause for another great huddle. We're going to do it again next Friday. We have the South Florida Regional Planning Council joining us. So you're going to be connected to those folks. They do a lot of great work. And they also are going to talk to us about finance and the revolving loan program that they run. So don't miss that next Friday in the morning huddle. Thank you all so much. Stay safe. And I'll see you next Friday. Danilo. Blessings, everyone.